What you need to know about Trump's war in Syria. First, we have to start with the chemical attack in 2013, which the Allied forces blamed on Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. UN human rights investigator Carla Del Ponte, whose job it was to investigate the attack, claimed it was the rebels who were responsible, not Assad. What appear on um, um, to our investigation that uh, that was uh, used by the opponents, by the rebels. And we have no, no indication at all that the government, Syria, uh, the authority of the Syrian government have used chemical weapons. Free Syrian Army Commander Abdel Basset Tawila publicly blackmailed the Allied forces, saying, Give us more weapons, or we'll reveal what really happened with the chemical attack. Obama and Congress signed over more taxpayer money to arm them. What does that tell you? There was never any evidence that Assad gassed his own people, but who claimed that they had evidence that Assad did it? Israel. To understand this, we need to go back to September 11, 2001. An hour after the first tower was demolished, former Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak blamed Osama bin Laden the uh, uh, Bin Laden sits in Afghanistan. There is a source well, of terror. Who else terror. Can you identify, though? Uh, because we're not saying he's responsible for this. No. But uh, so we've never made the case or argued the case that somehow Osama bin Laden was directly involved in 9-11. That evidence uh, has never been forthcoming. Dick Cheney publicly admitted in 2006 that there was no evidence linking Osama bin Laden to 9-11. Israel lied and Afghanistan was invaded. And every indication we have is that he is uh, pursuing, pursuing with uh, abandon, pursuing with every uh, ounce of effort the uh, establishment of, uh, uh, of uh, map weapons of mass destruction, including nuclear weapons. There is no question whatsoever that Saddam is seeking and is working and is advancing towards the development of nuclear weapons. No question whatsoever. The main reason we went into Iraq at the time was we thought he had weapons of mass destruction. It turns out he didn't, but he had the capacity to make weapons of mass destruction. But I also talked about the human suffering in Iraq. The terrorists attacked us and killed 3,000 of our citizens before we started the freedom agenda in the Middle East. They were. What did Iraq have to do with what? The attack on the World Trade Center. Nothing. Current Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told Congress in 2002 that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. There were no weapons of mass destruction. Israel lied again and Iraq was invaded. Bin Laden, who is behind this very attack, when you and the whole world will realize the death toll that had been paid in this event, it will become beyond any doubt of anyone on earth in the free world that a, cons a concerted attack against her should be taken. And the same applies to the Hezbollah, to the Islamic Jihad, to the Hamas, against rogue countries like Iraq would, and Iran. It wouldn't have helped today. It, it, it wouldn't have helped, anything. but this event emphasized that there are certain countries in the world, North Korea, Iraq, Iran, maybe Gaddafi, maybe one or more else, that are ready to shred the world order by using whatever they have. You've got Gaddafi who says that the war there is in part because of oil and Zionists. And you've got Syria siding with Gaddafi. And I think that the, it's the right step by the free world to intervene in Libya in order to put an end to this massacre of his own citizens by their own leader. Ehud Barak called for war against Libya in 2001. In 2011, this pathological liar claimed that Gaddafi was massacring his own people. Libya was invaded.
Именно после свержения Каддафи при активном участии отдельных европейских стран поток беженцев стал абсолютно бесконтрольным. Слушайте, люди из НАТО, вы бомбите стену, которая не пропускала поток миграции в Европу, стену, которая останавливала террористов Аль-Каиды. Этой стеной была Ливия. Вы разрушаете ее. Вы идиоты. Over the past two years, what began as a series of peaceful protests against the repressive regime of Bashar al-Assad has turned into a brutal civil war. Over 100,000 people have been killed. Millions have fled the country. In that time, America has worked with allies to provide humanitarian support, to help the moderate opposition, and to shape a political settlement. But I have resisted calls for military action because we cannot resolve someone else's civil war through force, particularly after a decade of war in Iraq and Afghanistan. The situation profoundly changed, though, on August 21st, when Assad's government gassed to death over a thousand people, including hundreds of children. The images from this massacre are sickening. Men, women, children lying in rows, killed by poison gas, Others foaming at the mouth, gasping for breath. A father clutching his dead children, imploring them to get up and walk. My fellow Americans, on Tuesday, Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad launched a horrible chemical weapons attack on innocent civilians. Using a deadly nerve agent, Assad choked out the lives of helpless men, women, and children. It was a slow and brutal death for so many. Even beautiful babies were cruelly murdered in this very barbaric attack. No child of God should ever suffer such horror. Tonight, I ordered a targeted military strike on the airfield in Syria from where the chemical attack was launched. It is in this vital national security interest of the United States to prevent and deter the spread and use of deadly chemical weapons. There can be no dispute that Syria used banned chemical weapons. There's an old saying in Tennessee, I know it's in Texas, probably in Tennessee, that says, fool me once, shame on, shame on you. <laughs> if fool me, we can't get fooled again. Another president another chemical attack in Syria, and again Assad is being blamed without any evidence being provided. Who is claiming that they are 100% certain Assad ordered this attack? Once again, Israel. Israeli Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman claimed this attack was a direct order from Assad. In 2015, Lieberman publicly called for disloyal Arab Israelis to be beheaded. Netanyahu, who lied about weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, is now calling on the world to intervene in Syria. Bana, do you blame President Assad for this? Yes. What is your message to President Assad? I am very sad. A lot of died and no one helped them. The world is watching. The world doesn't do anything. Strangely, the text on the teleprompter was very similar to what Israeli politicians and other Zionists have been saying the last couple of days. The world must fight another war for Israel. The plan to destabilize Iraq and Syria was officially planned by Israeli-American dual citizens in 1996. Douglas Fife, Richard Pearl, David Wormser, 
wrote policy papers for Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu titled A Clean Break, A New Strategy for Securing the Realm. In 2001, they got prominent positions in the Bush administration and Israel controlled U.S. foreign policy. Douglas Feith, Under Secretary of Defense. Richard Pearl, Chairman of the Defense Policy Board. David Wormser, Middle East Advisor to Dick Cheney. These are the facts. Douglas Feith even admitted his involvement on his own website. He just puts all the blame on David Wormser. In an interview with BBC, David Wormser's wife, Mayrav, who was also involved, admitted the clean break policy papers were legit. Well, that, that paper in 1996, the, the clean break paper, that was the paper that led to uh, accusations of, of dual loyalty. There is no dual loyalty. That brought us low economically, morally. We went to war against a guy who had absolutely nothing to do with 9-11. It was a total pretext. It's, it's inexplicable. And there you go to Cheney, there you go to Bush, there you go to the Jewish neocons who wanted to remake uh, the world. Maybe I can say that because I'm Jewish and uh, to bring about a certain I'm result really in the Middle sure East. I'm not really sure that you can. Okay. I'm not really, <laughs> sure, that, I'm not really <laughs> sure that you can. Almost all of the neocons who control U.S. foreign policy are Jewish. This is even admitted in mainstream Israeli news. They are planning these wars for the interest of the Jewish state of Israel. The United States has no interest in these wars and they are disastrous for the taxpayer. Most of the alternative media is controlled opposition. They'll talk about the neocons, but instead of mentioning Israel, they'll say globalists, establishment, or deep state. They will rarely say who in government is actually making these decisions. Yes, some of them are now criticizing Trump, but you still have to do your own research. Their job is to keep you at the gate. Do you have to be an open, you know, Mossad officer like Chertoff or Mukasey or Rahm Emanuel? I mean, do you have to be a foreigner to run our government? Is it uh, not enough that um, Israel had fingerprints all over 9-11? Absolutely. Okay, getting back, I'm going to play this Hillary clip where she said that I say 9-11 is an inside job. No, what I said was the Saudi Arabians, the globalists, are basically funding radical jihad. They're letting these attacks take place. They're using that to take our rights. Right after 9-11, about 10 days after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and, and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz. I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the joint staff who had used, used to work for me. And one of the generals called me and he said, sir, you got to Come in, you got to come in and talk to me a second. I said, well, you're too busy. He said, no, no. He says, we've made the decision we're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, we're going to war with Iraq. Why? But September 11th put in a different light, and taking on that tyrant forcefully um, meant, in fact, if anything, that we had to take that threat more seriously. So all three of those concerns are stated in Secretary Powell's testimony. Uh, I talked about I the mistreatment of the people. Let me could interrupt because my time is limited, unfortunately. You just said that this is uh, the 10 years ago you wouldn't have agreed to uh, a regime change. However, in 1998, you as a member of the New American Century sent a letter to President Senator, Clinton. I said something different. Well, I no, said wait a sec. You were saying we're seeing it in the light of September 11th. That's just not true. You've been advocating for regime change all through the late 90s. And in this letter, the... the hey, can I explain? There's a very clear The strategy should aim, above all, this is 1998, the strategy should aim, above all, at the removal of Saddam Hussein's regime from power. You signed that letter. He said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense's office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. And in, uh, in 1986, I had uh, uh, written uh, a book in which I had said uh, that the way to deal with uh, 
terrorist uh, regimes, well, with terror, was to deal with the terrorist regimes. And the way to deal with the terrorist regimes, among other things, was to uh, apply military force against them. To the هل يمكن تهديد العم سام طيب العم سام ما هو غرضه من ذلك برايكم الغرض انا اذا اردت ان اتكلم بصراحه ارى ليس هناك من من نتيجه لهذا العمل سوى تدمير البلد وان نبقى 50 عام غير قادرين على بناء بلدنا لماذا أرى. لماذا يريدون تدمير البلد هل هم حاقدون على السوريين لانهم سوريين مثلا لا لا يعني هنا لو تحدثنا بصراحه اكثر خيارات المجتمع الدولي تجاه الثورة السورية إما أن يجدوا فصيل يضمن يضمن الحدود مع إسرائيل وهذا لن يجدوه فينتقلون إلى الخيار الآخر ما هو أن تدمر هذه البلد لخمسين عام آخر. Free Syrian Army commander even admitted that the war in Syria is for Israel. Who got caught guarding the Israeli-Syrian border alongside Israeli soldiers? ISIS. Israeli Defense Minister in 2016, Mashi Alan publicly said that he prefers ISIS in control of Syria rather than the Syrian government. Ephraim El Avi, the former head of Mossad, which is the best intelligence agency in the world, publicly admitted to being allied with Al Qaeda. There have been reports that Israel has been treating wounded Syrian rebel fighters in its yeah, hospitals yeah, on the border, yeah. including fighters from Nusra Front, yeah. uh, which is, of course, the Al Qaeda proxy in Syria. Um, do those reports worry you that Israel's helping wounded Al-Qaeda-aligned fighters? As I said before, uh, in a different context, it's always useful also to deal with your enemies in a humane way. Al-Qaeda, to the best of my recollection, has up to now not attacked Israel. But has attacked your number one ally and protector and sponsor in the United States of America. There is a quote-unquote war on terror being going on for 15 years. <laughs> كيف هي علاقتك مع دولة الإسلام في العراق والشام؟ جيدة. أنا علاقتي مع الأخوة في دولة العراق والشام بالتأكيد تواصل شبه يومي أنا والأخوة في دولة العراق يقال بأن لحل هذه الخلافات وحل هذه المشاكل. دولة الإسلام باقية يا شيخ أبو بكر. الله أكبر. دولة الإسلام باقية. الله أكبر. تكبير. الله أكبر. تكبير. الله أكبر. Now it's Trump's turn to give taxpayer money to people who are torturing and moderately beheading civilians. The clean break policy papers we discussed earlier were based on Oded Yanan's strategy for Israel written in 1982 and translated by Professor Israel Shahak. This plan called for destabilizing surrounding regions by way of sectarian war to expand Israel's hegemony in the Middle East. Ram Ben Barak, the Director General of Israel's Intelligence Ministry, is calling for the partition of the Syrian state along sectarian lines and claiming it is the only solution. In 1994, Dick Cheney admitted that he knew Iraq would be destabilized if Saddam was taken out, and he did it anyway. Uh, once you got to Iraq and took it over and took down Saddam Hussein's government, then what are you going to put in its place? That's a very volatile part of the world, and, and if you take down the central government in Iraq, you can easily end up seeing pieces of Iraq fly off, uh, part of it uh, the Syrians would like to have to the west, uh, part of eastern Iraq uh, the Iranians would like to claim, fought over for eight years. Uh, in the north, you've got the Kurds, and if the Kurds spin loose and join with the Kurds in Turkey, then you threaten the territorial integrity of Turkey. It's a, it's a quagmire if you go that far and try to take over <laughs> Iraq. Written in Oded Yanan's plan, Iraq, rich in oil on the one hand, and internally torn on the other. Also, every kind of inter-Arab confrontation will assist us. This is exactly what we see today. A historical fact, which is not often discussed in the alternative media, is the Balfour Declaration in 1917, where Britain signed over Palestine to Walter Rothschild. The Rothschilds, one of the wealthiest families in the world, own Israel which is why they can do whatever they want. Israel is illegally occupying Syrian territory. 
the Golan Heights, in which they murdered 34 Americans and wounded another 174 to take. Huge amounts of oil were discovered in the Golan Heights, and Israel has their oil company there, Genie Energy. Its board members include Jacob Rothschild and Rupert Murdoch. Dick Cheney, who played a major role in destabilizing the Middle East, is also on the board of directors. Rothschilds also own an oil company in the Kurdistan region of Iraq, General Energy. Nathaniel Rothschild is on the board of directors. So Israel plans to destabilize Iraq and Syria, then owns oil companies operating in them. אני נמצאת כאן היום במערת המכפלה, מקום שבו אבותינו הלכו ונקברו. דווקא בתקופה שבה כמעט הכל משפט ומדברים הרבה על כל מיני אה, אה, טענות משפטיות, צריך לדעת, את המקום הזה קנה אברהם אבינו בכסף מלא, שטר מכר הראשון מסוגו בעולם, ככה שיש לנו גם זכויות היסטוריות וגם זכויות משפטיות על המקום. צריך לומר כאן בפה ברור, בקול ברור, לעולם, בעיקר לאו"ם, כדאי שישמעו קצת וידעו את העובדות. יש לנו זכות מלאה על הארץ, ונמשיך לבנות ולהתחזק ביהודה ושומרון. This holy book, the Bible, contains 3,000 years of history of the Jewish people in the land of Israel. No one, no one can change this history. The Israeli government are religious psychopaths. They openly believe that God is a real estate agent and are murdering people for that land. When you hear Greater Israel, that's referring to Genesis 15, 18. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying to your offspring, I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. These Jews don't just want Palestine. They believe they have a God-given right to the land and resources of Egypt, Lebanon, Iraq, and Syria, which explains their actions for the last several decades. If you've been following my channel, you're most likely not surprised by Trump's flip-flop on Syria. For those that are just waking up, get ready for more war, more debt, and more refugees for Europe. When I become president, the days of treating Israel like a second-class citizen will end on day one. We should have said to the, to the Jews, you've got a problem with the Nazis, sort it out yourself. It's no concern of Britain and the British Empire. We've got other fish to fry. That's what we should have said. Churchill, unfortunately, was beholden to these people, and he had no alternative. So in 1940, when we had a choice put to us of accepting the very generous peace offer that was put to us, which has been concealed from the history books by the Germans, or of fighting a totally senseless war onwards, Churchill took the wrong turning and bankrupted Britain and ruined the British Empire. I first said this in my book, Churchill's War, in 1987, and now five other major historians have said the same thing. This has now become known as the revisionist line of history on, of, of the Second World War, and I'm the one who actually opened up that path, making people think the unthinkable, looking at the alternative route that we could have taken in 1940. First, it's a loaded term in American history. Now, he defined it here as total allegiance to the United States of America, and, and it is something, as Cecilia said, this is why he was sent here by people who want to hear that message of America first. However, it carries with it overtones from the 1930s when an anti-Semitic movement saying we don't want to get involved in Europe's war. It's the Jews' fault in Germany. Charles Lindbergh led them. It is a, it is a, a term, as he defined it his way, but the words themselves carry very ugly echoes in our history.